In today's health alert, it's been an absolutely brutal season for allergies. More than 50 million Americans suffer from them each year, and they're the sixth leading cause of chronic illness in America. But there's good news. There are several ways to handle allergies. So the question is, which way is best for you? We're here to break it down is Dr. Robert Standring of Ear, Nose and Throat Consultants. Thank you so much for for joining us. So Thanks what for is it? Me, Thank you. So what is it about this time of year that really ramps up those allergies? We start to see a lot of tree pollen uh, mm -hmm. come out into, into the environment and it, 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 the exposure from the tree pollen really causes uh, an overreaction of our immune systems, causing more allergies. So that's what an allergy is. An allergy is just an overreaction of the immune system to something that's really not dangerous? Correct, an oversensitivity. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you have that oversensitivity, what are some of the ways that you can use to handle your allergies to either ease the symptoms or maybe not have them? There are three things you can do. One is avoidance. Mm -hmm. So you can be inside, use an air, condition air conditioner, change your filter on the air conditioning machine to make sure that it's working. You can use medications, over-the-counter medications, uh, such as an antihistamine like Claritin, Zyrtec, Allegra, or a nasal steroid. A nasal steroid would be Flonase, Nasonex, Nasacort. Those are over-the-counter, but can be con prescription as well. And then lastly, you can use immunotherapy. Now, immunotherapy can either be uh, shots or uh, drops that you can use in your mouth. Now, how frequently do you have to get the shots and how long does that last once, you, once they're effective? So with immunotherapy, typically it's uh, either a, a weekly or um, twice a week. And then also it could be um, lasting for months to even years. So once you go in, you may have to go in for several weeks, but the coverage will last much longer than that if, if, uh, if it's effective. Correct, yeah. So if you do that month therapy or that year therapy, typically it's gonna last the rest of your life. Oh, wow, that mm -hmm. is incredible. And uh, let's go back to uh, avoidance. You said uh, that's sort of staying inside, for instance, when pollen is at its most prevalent, but that sort of changes based on what you're allergic to and the time of day. So you mentioned uh, tree pollen. When is that most prevalent? So, so tree pollen is most prevalent typically at night, okay. and that's gonna be in your spring season. Mm -hmm. Grass pollens are gonna be in the summer, and then you're gonna have your weeds such as ragweed, which is one of the main culprits of allergies, which is gonna be in the fall. Okay, so your avoidance strategies will have to change depending on the season. Correct, and what you're allergic to. So there are year-round allergies as well, such as dust mites and molds and cockroach dander. Mm -hmm. And those things are 365. And then there's the seasonal allergies, such as the pollens, the grasses, and the weeds, which you have to figure out which season you know, is worse for you. And a final question, if you're a parent and you say, you know something, my kid seems to be perhaps uh, developing an allergy, should they wait until things, until they're sure or should they go see, seek help? So they, I, I feel that they should seek help because then the next exposure can be even worse. And typically they can see an ear, nose and throat who specializes in allergy or an allergist. All right, Dr. Robert Standring, Thanks, thank you so much for joining us and I sharing that great information. Thank you. We'll have that on our website, wxyz.com and TV20 Detroit.